I am Primal Peaky. Thank you for joining me for another BDSM United podcast. One of the really kinky things that a lot of people are drawn to and also kind of repelled by at the same time is the type of play that we call humiliation. We've met a lot of people into humiliation, humiliation play and we discovered that no two bottoms or submissives I mean quite the same thing when they use the term. It's more of an umbrella term for lots of different types of emotionally uh, more submissive play. Under that umbrella are humiliation, shame, embarrassment, degradation, and objectification. Uh, we've discovered that it's not enough to tell somebody that you're into humiliation and just leave it at that. Most tops or doms have a more general understanding of the kind of play that lies under that umbrella term. So you'll you don't want to shy away from it anymore. This is really a personal exercise for a lot of people to define what we think of what the following terms mean. Uh, and it's up to you to decide whether you want it and under what circumstances. So I, we hope you'll find this podcast useful too, since we've noticed that not uh, we're not the only people who have trouble finding the right language to talk about this kind of kink. So what is humiliation? To humiliate, to cause a painful loss of pride, self-respect, or dignity. That's really more of a dictionary definition. And oftentimes we can't uh, get our... um, get our lifestyle terms from vanilla dictionaries. So it's important to break this down a little bit more. And while we love everything about this definition, both a bottom type player and a top type player, you know, this somewhat fits. It's masochistic. It's a painful loss. It allows for all kinds of delicious creativity And to use this term in a discussion with a play partner is an invitation really to get to know each other better, to find out what makes the other person tick, to find out things like what do they fear, what do they crave, why, what do they want, what do they need, what do they despise, what do you spend lots of time thinking about. It's not enough to say someone is into humiliation. Each person has different sources of pride, different sources of self-respect, and um, a different idea of what their personal dignity is. First you find out what they are, then you find out what is the healthiest way to take it away from them. That's humiliation play. So this brings us to some subsets of humiliation. Uh, Let's look at shame. Shame is the painful feeling arising from the consciousness of something dishonorable, improper. This is the most explosive, possibly potentially hot, and also potentially the most toxic uh, thing to use within humiliation. It's really tricky. It's dangerous. It's often closely related to guilt. And it's related to breaking down self-worth. Some people love to feel ashamed within a play scene. It makes them really, really hot. Uh, Sometimes it bothers them for a long time. Um, There was an intelligent, educated, modern woman and feminist with plenty of shame issues to overcome in her day-to-day life. And feeling ashamed in the scene made her dripping wet. This in and of itself was shameful to them. 
Uh, it took lots of time for them to think about it and to process it. And so uh, sometimes we carry the shame with us from beyond the scene. And this isn't something that we necessarily want. And um, we know there are people who like to hold on to the shameful feeling they get in a humiliation scene. They really want to enjoy it, to feel it linger, to go away and process it. But, um, you know, oftentimes utilizing shame isn't really helpful or healthy. Unless you have an interest in emotional masochism outside of play scenes. And some people do. It's related to our own self-images, our self-esteem, how valuable we view ourselves as people. One often feels ashamed of themselves. We are our own harshest critic. We internalize it, and it can oftentimes warp us. There are a lot of ways to prevent this from happening. You oftentimes need evidence that uh, your partner cares about you despite exposing a flaw. And if we don't get some kind of validation from our play partner, either during or within the aftercare following a scene, involving shame we can sometimes hate our hate that thing about ourselves, or maybe have some animosity or despise the person who made us feel that way within the scene and we oftentimes don't want to resent ourselves or our partners and uh We want to know that a person cares about us and we want to be able to trust them and we want to know that they're okay with our flaws. And, uh, we don't want to have to beat ourselves up about it. Oftentimes when we are doing things that are kink related, they're already somewhat taboo in the world depending on what our culture or our ethnicity is. And so oftentimes... Um, we get enough shame externally um, pushed on us that oftentimes shame may not be the best route to take within a humiliation kink. So just something to think about, but your mileage may vary. Uh, embarrassment, to embarrass, to cause to feel confusion or self-conscious, to disconcert, to fluster. Embarrassment usually refers to a feeling less painful than that of shame. It's one associated with less serious situations, often of a social nature. Embarrassment is like shame's exhibitionist cousin. You can't be embarrassed, really, without an audience, whether uh, someone in person or an audience of being displayed online. When you have chocolate on your face and you don't realize it until you've given a 90-minute presentation to your colleagues, that's embarrassment. When you're walking around all day at work and look down and your fly is open and nobody told you, sometimes that's embarrassment. If you got chocolate on your face at home and happen to notice it in the mirror two hours after you ate the chocolate, that's just realizing you should wipe your face. If you're in your home all alone and you realize you didn't button up your pajamas or you didn't uh, zip up your fly, that just that's not really embarrassing. It's just something you forgot to do. Um, oftentimes, to the person bottoming, if they really want to take humiliation to another level, put it in front of an audience to add embarrassment to shame but beware that uh, some t some people may get defensive in front of uh, voyeuristic people especially if they don't trust them uh, sometimes it can bring out an angry sam you know like a smart ass masochist 
and you know can bring out what looks or appears within the scene to be a little bit of bratting. They may threaten or they may um, react with uh, profanity. Scenes can be like that can be cathartic and fun, but they're very different from scenes in the privacy of a home or a bedroom. You just really can't get embarrassed if it's just you and your uh, play partner. Uh, so if you want to do humiliation scene, complete with embarrassment in front of an audience, and uh, you definitely want to uh, be aware that it could cause the person to shut down internally or to break down explosively. So. That kind of scene may have a bad ending. It's something you definitely need to be risk aware or just aware of. Oftentimes, that kind of scene uh, may call for the need for a reward for the efforts of the person involved and let them have some success after their total failure, perhaps with a really good sweet time of aftercare or an orgasm. Now let's move on to something a little different, which is uh, degradation, to degrade, to redu reduce in worth, in honor, to bring down strength, character, rank, or status. This often is the essence of topping and bottoming. Uh, Oftentimes, uh, people who are into humiliation kind of play or think they are, are really into degradation. And uh, in a pain scene, it might be strength or endurance that's broken down. If there's a uh, role play involved, it's often uh, the person in power bringing down the status of the person underneath them or lower than them. The thing is the bottom agrees to give up this transferred activity, this tra <laughs> agrees to give up this power within the scene to the top in the form of power and control. The bottom is degraded in direct proportion to the empowerment of the top. And uh, it's really important to note that while the word degradation normally carries a hugely negative connotation, when it's used within the context of BDSM, it's not implying something unpleasant or negative. Often it's, it's uh, we're talking about something that's somewhat hot or sexy. Becoming reduced or less than can be a really wonderful experience, experience when that's what you want. Oftentimes, a bottom wants to feel like you're worth more than you are. Or, on the flip side, want to feel less than they are. Or they want the top to feel like more than they are. <laughs> In play that involves a role play, the bottom often wants to feel degraded on multiple levels. They want them to feel like their needs and their wants don't matter at all. It's somewhat of a consensual non-consent, but you also want to make sure that you're within the boundaries and limits of your play partner. You Often in the bottom wants them to feel like their only desire is to please and elevate the top. Therefore, a total loss of ego on the part of the bottom is the ultimate goal. Let's look at uh, a subset of degrading, which is objectification. To objectify, uh, there are seven features of objectification. Instrumentality is to treat as a tool used for a purpose. Uh, denial of autonomy. Inertness to treat as though they're lacking in agency. Fungibility to 
treat as though they're interchangeable with other objects or somewhat expendable. Volatility, to treat as though they're lacking in boundaries. That's where it's more somewhat of a consensual non-consent. Um, ownership, to treat as though they're capable of being bought or sold. Denial of subjectiv subjectivity, to deny the validity or the existence of the object's thoughts or feelings. Well, degradation implies a lowering or reduction of these things, rank, status, worth, strength. Objectification implies an elimination of one or more of these qualities. Uh, it, it takes a special kind of mindset to feel that one's active participation in a scene goes only as far as, sur as surrendering one's right to self. It's sometimes difficult for people to get into the mindset of being an object. If someone's attempt attempting to objectify their partner and not, actu uh, and not ex actually expecting them to act like an object, then that's typically uh, where what makes objectification uh, appealing. What I'm saying is, to break it down, is that uh, and in objectification, the person um, wants to still, still be treated like a person, but they want to be also simultaneously treated as an object. It's like uh, wanting to be a sex toy, wanting to be used, wanting to just be a uh, wanting the partner just to use their holes, things like that, um, where there is a fine line between the your existing humanity and the um, and the objectification um, in in a scene involving something like human furniture. There's still that human aspect to the furniture. There's really a give and a take there. If you're required to actively subjugate your own pride for the pleasure of the top and feel like you're participating in something, if to be an object from the get-go, they often get bored. The kind of object objectification that people tend to really like is sexual objectification. They love to re be reduced to a body or even a body part uh, for someone to be to use for the top to use. So they don't want to necessarily just be uh, a lampshade or you know uh, just a thing. They want to be objectified. Um, they want to be uh, felt like they are being used or owned. That's really uh, the appeal of objectification. I'm Primal Piggy. Thank you for joining me for this uh, BDSM Unite podcast where we kind of work through uh, the kink of humiliation, degradation, objectification, shame. Um, a lot of these different related things that are all related to humiliating and degrading and objectifying. <laughs> there's just a lot there to unpack. So hopefully this gave you some ideas and really honestly, we want you to think through your own feelings, find out and discover what your own kinks are. Um, you can find all of our resources at www.bdsmunited.com. It was really a joy speaking with you today about this topic and we'll talk with you again soon.